Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. Today we have a bit of a how to space engineers, and that is a proper airlock system. Alright, so when I say how to create a proper airlock system, I do kind of mean how I kind of make it, because <laughs> everybody has their own way, I would assume. And at first, I overcomplicated things and found a decent solution for a simple, simple, proper airlock. So for a very long time, many of you who've watched my series, I've been fighting double door systems by opening them, going through them, close them, which has been a bit of a hassle. So finally, I decided to kind of experiment and play around with a proper airlock system where it is going to depressurize the air in between the first and second door. So quote unquote, proper airlock system. Uh, like I said, most of you probably already know how to do this, but if you didn't know how to do it, here's a somewhat simplified way of doing a proper airlock system with some doors, sensors, and timing blocks. But first, let me show you how this all kind of works. So pretend you're inside a space station. Um, this is my space station right here, <laughs> tiny little space. All right, so we're going to walk right into this door. It opens automatically. I didn't open it myself. And it's going to close automatically as well. And that's through a sensor. And I'll show that in a second. So next step is that it's going to go right here. Depressurize. Open the door. Walk right out. It should close the door on itself. And then in a few seconds, it's going to repressurize in this space right here. If you're solo, obviously, you wouldn't need to pressurize it again. Because you're going to go back into the door unpressurized or depressurized. And then when you're about to open that door... You can pressurize it but in terms of if you're playing like multiplayer and multiple people in the ship of course you want to make sure that door closes and pressurize this airlock system back so when they open this door you don't lose that um, air pressure or oxygen in that case so that's where the problem lies where we want to loop it in some senses so i have it set up where if i get next to this door it should hit the sensor open the door for us but first it depressurize and then it'll close the door immediately after you walk off of it. And it's going to pressurize in a few seconds. And I'll explain why a few seconds. And of course, you can't open this door until it is pressurized. So that's pressurized. And now this opens up here. So that's kind of like a proper airlock system. So that you don't lose oxygen or, air or pressurization between the two doors. So as simple as that. So, so there are some safeguards in here. As you saw, is basically... We have the doors off specifically like that because we have it pressurized right now and we don't want to be able to press F or open a door open door key and release the pressurization. So that's why that's off. This is right now on still on because we could still go in and out of this door. But as you see here, once I get onto it, it turns it on and opens the door. And then when it closes the door, it turns it off. So you can't just press F and open the door while it's still doing its thing. So that there's some good safeguards and some bad safeguards, as you can see there. But yeah, if you want to get back in, get close to the door, it op opens up automatically. And it's depressurized. And then when it's about to, when it's closed up and it's trying to pressurize, it's off. So you can't disrupt the pressurization side of things so it's about 10 seconds for that to pressurize and then we're good to go and at the same time if we're outside and go in it's going to open the doors depressurize and this door is locked as i mentioned before so this door is not going to open up until we get air pressure that's when it opens back up so that's some of the safeguards here and then another safeguard because of the looping system is if somebody does like a double take on the door. So if I just jumped on here and came off of it, it's going to ruin the system like that <laughs> in an essence. But I put some kind of um, safeguard there so that it remains, it opens up all the way and closes it all the way. So that I'll explain in a second as well. But if you did a few seconds here and jump right off, it does cause an issue where it's going to turn off and then not able to close and everything like that. 
So I had to add another safeguard there. But the simplest way to doing it is basically if you're on here, it's depressurize, open the door, close the door, and then pressurize. That's the most simplest way to do it. But with that looping system, that's where it gets a little bit, a little bit more complicated. All right, so how did I do all this? Basically, first things first, you need to work with the sensors. So the sensor, if you have sensor field range on, you can see where your sensors are pulling from. And another trick also is that when you have the sensor field on, make sure to have show on HUD for your sensor. So this sensor covers this block right here, which is the door right here. You see it extends out a little bit. So basically with the sensor itself, set up action. If you're on the sensor, in the field of the sensor, touching it, it's telling the door to open. And if you're off of the sensor, it's telling this door to close. As simple as that in this case here. Of course, you have to play around with other things such as when it's being detected. Well, in this case, it's just myself. So it's detect player. And of course, you can ch you do owner, friendly, neutral, enemy as well. So those are a few things to know about that. But once you're in the field, it opens up. And of course, once you're out of the field, it closes. So with that aspect of it, what I did with the proper airlock, we had to do something very similar for the first door. So the first door, the placement's a little odd. I could have placed it on top. But I have a bit of a window here that's keeping it um, airtight. So the sensor's right here. And the action is same thing. It's open and closing, whether you're in the field or out of the field. Um, the only thing I don't like about sensors is that it is a bit of an odd placement sometimes. If you put it on top, it's perfect because it acts like this. But the problem ends up to be like you can't put anything above it. So that just becomes a bit of a nuisance. But of course, you can always do it like this, like backwards, forward, blah, blah. Uh, only issue is that if you touch a block like right here, it can activate as well. So that's a bit of a pain. But of course, you can shrink the size of the sensor field, which I'm not going to cover too much about right now. Okay. So the next piece, that's when it gets complicated. Everything is based on this sensor right here that's activating this door, which is the, the exit door for the most part. So going into it, basically the sensor out, I call it sensor out, which is that door right here. Setup action is going to be when you're in the field, activate this 1.1 on sensor, enter out, depress. So basically that is going to be this block here. With one second delay, setup action is to say air vent to depressurize, which is depressurize on, tell block 1.2 to start, toggle the hatch door, that door specifically to be off, which is not necessary, and also turn the hatch door 1 off, which is this door here. So the moment you're inside that field, that's going to say off, so you can't open it or close it or whatever the case is. So this specific toggle off is a bit of a safeguard. So that's what that's there for. I do have this door turn off initially. So that's a, a big piece to it too. If you go 1.2 on the sensor door action, I have a delay on two with the setup action with turning on the door because it's already off and then go to 1.3. 1.3 is going to be the setup action with delay 1. Where it's actually going to open the hatch door. And then start this 2.1. I'll talk about that in a second. So once you get out to the field, it depressurizes the air here. It's going to lock that door by turning it off. This door is default off, but it's going to turn off just in case. And then it's going to activate the next timer block. Right. So the next timer block is going to just take, tell this door to turn on. And then the next timer block is going to open it. So instead of putting timer block to turn on and open at the same time, which could work, but sometimes for some reason it opens halfway. <laughs> so we try to avoid that and add another timer block. It's it, You can do it both with both, but it, it probably is better to separate it sometimes. I felt like it's a good idea to separate it in that case. All right. So another, a safeguard piece is going to be our 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. So... What I mean by safeguard, that's when we do that double takes portion of it. So we get into the field, decide, oh, I don't want to go back in. It's going to open because you acted like you were, you were on the field. And then it's going to close eventually in, in that case. So if you do that double take system without 
these on. Let's just turn it off for a second, right? You get onto the field. The normal thing is that it's going to open and you're going to walk off of it by going in or leaving it. And it's going to close through this pressurization and everything normally easy peasy. But if you didn't have this double take safeguard, if you let's just say, for example, double take, it's going to open and then it's going to do that. <laughs> it's going to open halfway and it's it's stuck. So that's something you don't want to do. Um, and that's because when you're off the sensor, we're told that we told the doors to close. So I had this, what I call double take safeguard. It's going to tell the door to be on. Then it's going to tell the door to close and then back to off. And of course, when we're off the sensor field, we tell it to immediately close the door. Turn off the door and then turn off depressurization and also turn on hatch door number one, which is that door over there. So with that whole looping system and everything like that, it is unfortunate, but we did have to put the um, air pressure or turning off depressurization at 10 seconds. And that's just to have enough time for the double takes, all the safeguard stuff to go through and make sure everything works well. Although I believe you're not wasting anything if you have depressurized the air already, open the door uh, and then turn off depressurization, you're not wasting anything because there's nothing to pressurize uh, because it's not air locked or airtight. But just in case, I decided to just give it 10 seconds for it to do its thing. So that's how I did the proper airlock. If you didn't know how to do this, I'll share this on a workshop. So check out the link down below. And of course, I'm sure many of you already know how to do this and also more simplified way of doing it. My initial thought was way over complicated than this right now, because uh, that's just how I think. But also with automation, I think that's going to make things even more simpler. All right, for those of you who thought I went a little too fast, couldn't follow along. Here we go. The main setup is basically the door over here, which is sensor out with the setup action. When you're in the field, toggle 1.1. If you're out of field, toggle 3.1. And then here are the timer blocks here. So you'll see the delays, the setup action right here. There's air vents. There's a group of them to depressurize on. Go to the next timer block. Door 2, toggle off. Door 1, toggle off. So timer block 1.2, delay, setup action, door 2, toggle on, go to 1.3, 1.3, delay, setup action, close door 2, no, open door 2, and go to our 2.1 DT double take, 2.1, delay right here, setup, it's gonna door 2, toggle on, and start 2.2, 2.2, delay, setup action, Close door 2 and start off 2.3. 2.3 delay. Setup action is to toggle the door off. And then once you're off the field, you're going to start up 3.1. Setup action is going to say start 3.2 and also close door 2. 3.2. Setup action is going to say toggle the door off. And start 3.3. 3.3. This is the 10 second one. Take the air vents and turn off depressurization. And also turn on door number one. All right. So once again, that's kind of my way of making this proper airlock system. Of, of course, I probably did overcomplicate it a bit still. But if you have a better way of doing it, let me know down in the comments down below. All right, so I do hope it was very helpful for some of you who may have had some issues trying to make a proper airlock system and also fighting double door systems like I do. <laughs> so I hope it all works out and thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.